Yeah, that's me. Okay, uh, I will thank Mario for giving me the chance to speak here and also the organizers. Um, before showing the experimental results, I will reiterate what our methods are compared to what the existing methods are. So I'm doing the thing that people hate, which is going back number of slides. Um, yeah. Here, yeah. So the whole problem is that you're given a polynomial that you want to implement, and you're trying to uh, construct this quantum circuit inside this uh, within the quantum signal processing framework. So there are two parts of the problem. The first one is given the polynomial, how would you construct a unitary out of it? That's what we call the completion phase. And also given this high degree unitary element, how do you decompose it into degree one elements such that these degree one elements can be easily implemented inside the quantum circuit. So for the completion part, the existing methods uh, first proposed by Lo, Yoder, and Chuang used root finding. Basically, this is a high degree polynomial, high degree uh, polynomial over complex. And we want to find all the roots of them with high precision, such that um, that, that we can re re reconstruct these G part, which is the other part, the completion part of the unitary. And um, so we present here our uh, heuristic of, find, of achieving the whole thing, but uh, in a like, easier to understand and more machine learning -y way, which is that we first propose a uh, a proposed polynomial G such that F and G together are close to unitary. And then we try to augment from this G by adding each time a little perturbation and uh, solving that this perturbation should make the unitarity or to make this element closer to a unitary element. And by iteratively adding this delta G, this augmentation, um, we hope that we can find, and also our experiment demonstrates that we can find a completion part G in reasonable time. So this is for the completion. Okay, where is it? Yeah, for decomposition, as Mara said, the method that we proposed here is a least squared method which is solving a bunch of over-determined uh, linear systems. This over-determined set of linear equations would have a unique solution when, um, when the given input is exactly a unitary element. But due to numerical error, this element that is given might not be exactly unitary, in which case, uh, this set of linear equations may not have a solution. So instead we find the solution which uh, satisfies the set of linear equations the best. And um, so this is our method. What the existing method is, is that, so we already know this unitary element must be a product of a degree zero element with a bunch of degree one element. So if we can solve for these degree one element one by one by unraveling this product one by one, then we can successfully recover all the elements that uh, multiply to you. So the existing method is just carving out this SD part and then as D minus one, as D minus two up to S one. Okay, so that's the, uh, the comparison I will make through the experiments. And could I have this? Yep.
Oh, good. Um, OK, so we tried several set of instances for the numerical experiment, as we said before. For the least square part, we know that in principle it should work when everything is perfect, but we don't have a theoretical analysis of the error scaling. Uh, so we decided to show it through the experiment to show how stable it is in the real, in the practical cases. So the experiments, the instances for the experiment are chosen as Laurent polynomials with a given degree, where each coefficient of the Laurent polynomial is chosen iid from minus one to one. And of course, uh, this, I these instances have some disadvantages that I will discuss later. And another technical issue is that not all Laurent polynomials can serve as a left, uh, upper left corner of a unitary especially when the uh, infinity norm of it is greater than one, saying that for some w, this uh, upper left element itself would exceed one. In that case, there ob obviously is no completion. So we normalized the polynomial to, L infinity, to the sorry, infinity norm just for, uh, just for every possible value of of the W of the unitary given the whole thing must be up, the completion part must give a unitary. So we normalize it to L infinity norm 0.5 just for numerical stability. But theoretically, it can be one, in which case we will suffer much from, much more from the numerical stability. And also, yeah, by lack of Arithmetic precision, we mean that we only used Python's NumPy package with double precision. So all the experiments, experiments done here are using double precision. We do have uh, experiments using arbitrary precision using Mathematica, but uh, I'm not going to show them today here. OK, so yeah, the question people would care about the most is the scaling of the time and error with respect to the input degree. And here, uh, this first plot is the scaling of completion time. The x-axis is the degree of the Laurent polynomial that we choose, which ranges from 10 to uh, 4,000. We have experiment results for 5,000, but they just took too long, and I decided not to put them here. And the y-axis is the time for the completion part. And uh, yeah, as we can see here, there are two sets of dots, the blue dots and the red dots. The red dots are using Python package to do root finding, which takes time. Uh, I would say the scaling is worse than our iterative uh, approach of augmenting the g part to get the unitary which is the blue dots. And uh, from the plot, it seems plausible that um, these two differ by a constant factor, but uh, we uh, need to do further analysis to demonstrate that. OK, so this is the time scaling for the completion part. And what about the error scaling? Um, yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, so again, the red dots are for root finding, and the blue dots are for our iterative method. And um, yeah, one thing I should explain here is why the blue dots are over that line. That is because it's an iterative method, and we set the uh, ending condition to be that the error is below 10 to the minus 8. So it always ends when it uh, crosses the 10 to the minus 8 line, which is here. Whereas the root finding method that we use use the uh, NumPy package, so it does root finding up to double precision. So it actually has a error scaling. OK, so much for the completion part. What is uh, more interesting is the decomposition part. Um, yeah, as I said before, 
the decomposition method that we use is a least square approach of having the elements, uh, having the degree of the elements one by one. But, uh, and the existing method, which is the red dot, is carving out a degree one element at a time just to uh, reduce the degree one by one. And um, so the existing method of carving suffers from numerical st instability, saying that the numerical error would eventually build up when I do these uh, high degree iterative thing. Basically, if I want to be safely, uh, be able to safely carry out the carving, then I need the initial precision of the root finding to be scaling linear with, uh, with respect to the degree of the polynomial. And we uh, suspect here that for the least square uh, method, the dependency of the degree for the root finding part would scale polynomial, sorry, would scale polylogarithmically with the degree of the polynomial. And so we, what we see here is that the x-axis is the degree of the polynomial, and the y-axis is the L1, sorry, is the L infinity error of the final result. The, as we said before, we, at, at, at the end of the day, we have a unitary, and we want the upper left corner to be close to the given polynomial. And the L infinity error is just the most strict, most strict measure of how close these are. As we can see here, the blue dots are the least square method, and it doesn't even scale at all, at least from this plot. Whereas the carving method, it performed reasonably well when the degree is very low, but I think at the degree of 100 or 200, the error starts to blow up because we're using double precision and it become completely garbage uh, at around 1,000 degree. Um, yeah, so these are the experiment results and I have some discussions. Yeah, certainly these experiments are only done on this non-realistic distribution where we have a polynomial where each coefficient is chosen uniformly, randomly from minus one to one. What we would encounter more frequently in real life, for example, if we are doing Hamiltonian simulation or HHL, then um, the typical input of the polynomial would have an exponential decay in magnitude with respect to the degree, in which case, um, Neither of them can perform well with degree 50 with double precision. Yeah, but still we tried them arbitrary precision on Mathematica and it showed a, uh, yeah, I, I would say this square approach would have a better uh, error dependency than the carving. Yeah, and just to, get a real, just to get a feeling of how these things would scale. For Hamiltonian simulation problem, uh, we have a, let's see. Um, yeah, so Hamiltonian simulation is one example of using QSP to get a, uh, let's see, logarithmic, um, dependency with the error of the simulation. So that means the quantum circuit, the complexity of the quantum circuit scales logarithmically with the error of the Hamiltonian simulation. And for such an instance, we can successfully decompose a, 100, a degree 100 instance of the polynomial, and it can be done in 20 minutes with uh, reasonable precision, saying precision about 10 to the minus 3. Sorry, is it degree 100 or degree 1,000? Degree 1,000. Um, yeah. And another thing I want to point out is that, so here for 
completion, I showed the scaling of time and error. For decomposition, I only showed the scaling with respect to the scaling of error with respect to the degree rather than the time. That is because it's not a fair game to compare the time for carving because carving is just a linear time algorithm of carving out one element at a time. Whereas for least square, we need a poly, uh, polynomial scaling just to do the least square. Uh, the catch is in order to do carving, in order to carry out the carving algorithm to have a final result with high accuracy, we would have to do the root finding part, which is the first, the completion phase with extremely high accuracy. And that would blow up the time of the first phase, of the completion phase. So um, just to compare the time scaling of uh, carving and least square in the second phase doesn't reveal the total time needed for doing the how uh, quantum signal processing algorithm. And uh, yeah, I think that's all. Any questions? Questions? So, so actually I have one. So, mm -hmm. so you're basically talking mm -hmm. about the time for you to design the algorithm, not, not actually yep. your mm -hmm. outcome. So have you tried to see whether the outcome itself can make some difference? Like maybe your circuit is better than the other circuit? Oh, I see. Uh, that's, a, that's actually a very, very good question. So the algorithms here are just a classical algorithm for the compiling phase of the, quant the actual quantum algorithm. The running time of the actual quantum algorithm is already determined by the degree of the polynomial. Basically, uh, what, how big a degree polynomial that we have on the, in the beginning is like um, how many iterations of this sigma x rotation that would appear in the quantum algorithm. So the, yeah, yeah I, I would say the complexity of the quantum algorithm is predetermined by the polynomial itself. And um, so how to get that polynomial is another question. How we use our polynomial to approximate, for example, if we are doing HHL, if we are doing matrix inversion, then we are, uh, then we are using trigonometric polynomials to approximate the inverse function. And the quantum complexity of how that can be done well enough only depends on how well we can approximate the inverse function trigonometrically using at <coughs> as least d degree as possible. Any more questions? <clears throat> well, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Both Mary and the So I want to just remind you, this is the last talk, but not the last session of the workshop. Um, so we have uh, the second open problem session uh, after the short break. And especially for who have you know, not been able to attend the Tuesday one, I reserve time for you to speak. Uh, I'm actually looking for Scott. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please still come. That's like, uh, I mean, after the break. So let's... Uh, Let's see. Let's meet at 2.40. We have like 15 minutes.